And number seven, the Los Angeles Rams taking Malik Hooker, the safety out of Ohio State, rangy uh, safety that can, you know, obviously uh, come up and, and run protection as well as uh, run from sideline to sideline. Number six, the New York Jets, he has them taking Leonard Fournette. All right, that's a good thing right there. I like that. Yeah. I like the fact that Leonard Fournette, running back, is being taken so high or looked at or, or may be taken so high. Because over the last couple of years, y'all know this, running backs have really been devalued. And, uh, you know, I hate that because, you know, I played the position my entire life growing up. And uh, running backs used to be the ish. Like, it used to be running backs usually were just as heralded or, you know, as high on the totem pole as the quarterbacks back in the day, but not so much over the last couple of years. So I like Leonard Fournette, man, real hard runner. Last year really didn't, you know, have the year that he had the year before. I think Leonard Fournette in the back of his mind, man, is really just trying to make it through the season uninjured. I think that played into the way that he uh, went out and played the game. He was worried about his money, which I can't blame him for that. And I don't know if that's the case, if he would even say that. I know he wouldn't say that, but I think subconsciously maybe that affected him last year uh, playing tentatively, but uh, just a tremendous talent coming out of out of college, out of LSU. Number five, the Tennessee Titans, Marshawn Lattimore, cornerback out of Ohio State. That's two defensive backs out of Ohio State. Number four, Jamal Adams, safety out of LSU. Number three, Jonathan Allen, the defensive lineman out of Alabama. Number two, Mitch Trubisky, the quarterback out of North Carolina. Don't know a lot about Mitch Trubisky, and I'm in ACC country uh, for the most part. Um, haven't seen a lot of them, uh, but they need a quarterback in San Francisco. We're going to talk about Kirk Cousins here in a second and, you know, possibly what would happen to him uh, in Washington or possibly a trade to another team, and, and one of those teams is the San Francisco 49ers. We'll get to that. But Mitch Trubisky, man, they're high on this kid, looks the part. Big, strong, all of the same little stuff that they always talk about. The quarterbacks and the number one pick, the Cleveland Browns, man. And I've seen this from most of the draft experts. Um, is Miles Garrett, defensive end out of Texas A&M. So those are the guys that, that should be at the top of the draft board. Um, they probably won't be. Well, clearly they won't be in that particular order. There's always something that happens. There's trades uh, that come along with this type of conversation. But uh, I like I – like, uh, Mel Kuyper more so than I like that other kid. And I can't even remember what his name is right now. It seemed like over the last couple of years, they've been trying to bring the other dude in <laughs> to take Mel Kuyper's spot. But Kuyper's just sticking around, man. He old school ESPN. Yeah. So the combine starts today. Uh, really looking forward to checking that out on uh, – uh, the NFL channel. Um, always interesting to see what these cats run in the 40s. They don't run the 40s till later in the week, I don't think. I think today they just do like height uh, and weight and that type of thing. I think maybe today they start the first uh, drill or the first exercises they do where they get tested on. I think the first one is the bench press. And so if, if you don't know, uh, if you one of the, 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 the poodles listening to the show, one of the stewettes listening to the show, so they bench press 225 pounds as many times as they can to show endurance and upper body strength, which obviously is very important. Uh, so basically that's, that's two 45-pound plates on each side, and the bar weighs 45 pounds. That math equals up to 225 pounds. So I think they do that today, and, uh, and we'll definitely watch that uh, today and all throughout the week, man, and and come and talk about it through the week. I mean, for the most part, if it's got anything to do with the NFL, we're going to watch. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Let me read some messages in the chat room on Spreaker.com, get some of your thoughts on what we've talked about already a little bit. Uh, I wanted to get your, your thoughts on Antonio Brown as far as where you would rank him as far as receivers in the NFL and also uh, Pittsburgh Steelers history. I mean, off the top of my head, off the top of my head, I mean, he's number he's number two. 
No, I'm not. I mean, he might even be number one as far as Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, and I know we talk about Lynn Swan and John Stallworth. John Stallworth statistically was a better receiver than Lynn Swan. Uh, but Lynn Swan probably had the bigger brand. Both of them are Hall of Famers. John Stallworth, it took a while for him to get in. I would say right now, as far as production and what they've done, success with the team, Antonio Brown doesn't have a Super Bowl ring right now. I don't think the Steelers have won a Super Bowl ring since Antonio Brown's been there. I think that overall, right now, I would say John Stallworth, number one. I would say Antonio Brown, number two. If you look at Lynn Swan's numbers, Numbers are pedestrian, to say the least. Very, very minimal. He made a lot of big plays, and our former producer, Shaggy, of the two live students back in the day, always had this thing about Lynn Swan and how he got too much hype, and, you know, he wasn't that great of a receiver. He just made these acrobatic catches that you always see the film of, the footage of. But Lynn Swan was a great receiver to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers during the eras and during the time in which they dominated and they won many, many Super Bowls. So being, you know, that guy, having the highlight reel catches once again kind of elevated his his status. But if you talk about production, man, um, back then during that time as well, they ran the football a lot. That's always something else you got to put in the equation as well. So they had Franco Harris and they had those cats like that. So they ran the football a lot. So numbers, passing numbers are nowhere uh, 25 years ago compared to what they are today. So you kind of got to factor all of that in. If, 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 if you put the question like this, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, if you had your choice of wide receivers, and this is probably the best way to do it, because Antonio Brown doesn't have a Super Bowl victory right now, if you had your choice of Pittsburgh Steeler wide receivers that you could draft, knowing, you know, seeing them at the height of their career, in their best years, at the peak of their career, who would it be? You know, get rid of all of the, the stats, get rid of their accomplishments, get rid of the pole Bowl selections, get rid of how many Super Bowl rings they got. Like, if you just had your choice, this is the thing that I always bring up. This is the example I always bring up uh, when I talk about Randy Moss and, 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 uh, and uh, Jerry Rice, is if you could pick between Jerry Rice and Randy Moss at the top of their career and you just go over their skill set, you just go over their talent, their ability, you know, <laughs> you know, if you if you just factored in, who are you taking? I'm taking Randy Moss, hands down. Shut up, that's my choice. Shut up. I'm taking Randy Moss, hands down. So if you looked at it like that, if you're on a playground and you're picking teams, you're choosing players, you know, for your uh, fictitious, you know, playground championship football team, you know. I'm taking Randy Moss. And if you talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers all time, I think, I think right now I'd still take John Stallworth. John Stallworth was a great wide receiver. Big target. Uh, did everything. I mean, just just, uh, just a great route runner. Could go deep. Could go across the middle. Uh, slightly, I think I might take John Stallworth right now over Antonio Brown. And Antonio Brown, you know, might be better. He might be a better all-around wide receiver than the best wide receivers in Pittsburgh Steelers history. So what are your thoughts about that? I want to hear what Steelers fans got to say. From Corbett Brother, and the Corbett Brother is in uh, Pittsburgh, I believe. He says, Doug, your cousin is going to Pittsburgh. They've been talking about him up here for a couple of months as as far as AB's contract, have you noticed that they haven't mentioned any guaranteed money except for the signing bonus? That's for a reason. They are structuring a true year-by-year contract for Antonio Brown. Um, first of all, for your comments about Derek Rivers possibly going to the Pittsburgh Steelers, that makes all the sense in the world because that's what Pittsburgh's done throughout their history, or at least in my lifetime. They've gotten big, fast strong outside linebackers in that 3-4 scheme that can go after the quarterback, that can rush, that can play the run as well, that have been stout defenders as well as can go get the quarterback, okay? And Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Steelers is linebacker, you know, team number one. And so that would make some sense as well, but I'm still calling it. Hopefully he comes to the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, from Al Thompson, Luce, that's a nickname given to him that stuck when he was a kid. From 334 Bama Boy, all you need to know about Mr. Trubisky, Doug, is he's another 
white quarterback that has no business being drafted over Deshaun Watson. Um, nobody should be drafted over Deshaun Watson, much less than uh, this Trubisky kid. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous to me that there's even conversation about Deshaun Watson falling to the end of the first round off of his production. You know, this is kind of the conversation. And there's another story that I'm going to talk about where the Puppet Factory broke down, you know, if you had the draft this year with last year's class, where would these players get drafted at? Okay? And so when they look back at it now, it's like, yeah, Dak Prescott would have been the first quarterback in the draft. The reason Dak Prescott didn't go to the uh, number one in the draft or, or even get picked in the first round, he didn't go to the fourth round, is because they ignored his production. They ignored his production. And, yes, not being 6'5", 240 pounds, and not being white, let's be honest, you know, affected him. I don't know how much it affected him, all those different factors, but it affected him. Dak Prescott didn't go until the fourth round with the production that he had at Mississippi State in the SEC, okay? And right now there's a lot of teams uh, regretting it. There's a lot of teams regretting it, man, and I think the same thing for Deshaun Watson. You know what? And you listen to the Doug Shore Show. Even if Deshaun Watson goes to the NFL and doesn't pan out to be, I don't know, the next Joe Montana or somebody like that. I mean, the stats don't lie in this particular case. Numbers don't lie in this particular case. Accomplishments don't lie in what he's done. And he's done. It's not like Carson Wentz playing at South Dakota or something like this. This man played in the ACC, one of the, the Power Five conferences. This man went to the national championship two years in a row. I don't have to give you all of the numbers and stats and the figures. Based on his production, based on, based on his competition that he played week in and week out and dominated against, based on what he did against the vaunted Alabama Crimson Tide two years in the national championship game, they fell a little bit short the first year. Second year, they got it done. Based on what he did alone, Against Alabama, who this year, a lot of these quote-unquote experts were saying the best defense that ever lined up in college football. You remember that? They were arguing that Alabama's defense was the best assembled college football defense in the history of the game. And Deshaun Watson dominated them. (laughs) Dominated. (laughs) Dominated. And so you never know how these things are going to turn out in the NFL. There have been can't-miss players, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. There have been these quote-unquote can't-miss players drafted many times before, and for whatever reasons, they don't pan out in the NFL. How about what your resume says? How about your production? Okay, usually that's the way that it works. Okay, usually that's the way that it works. Athletically as well, the only knock that you can give Deshaun Watson is that he's not 6'5". And what is he, 6'2"? <laughs> okay, what, Joe Montana was, what, six foot tall? So, I mean, that's, that's, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous, man. Um, they missed on Dak Prescott last year. I think, now you're hearing all of this, you know, pick number 10 by the Buffalo Bills or late first round or whatever. I think when it comes down to it, man, um, a team that needs Deshaun Watson in the first 10 picks before number 10 is going to take him. That needs a quarterback. You need a quarterback. The Cleveland Browns probably won't do it because of their history, because they've had such bad luck. They probably just need to try something else. I get that. But even if Cleveland were to take him, it makes sense. They need a quarterback. He's the best one on the board. Get your damn quarterback. Forget what happened in the past. More of your messages in the chat room on Spreaker.com, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Uh, RC in the chat room says, I take Rice slightly over Moss. But let's not forget Moss is putting up Rice numbers with an older Randall Cunningham, Jeff George, a young Dante Culpepper, Gus Farratt, and Bubby Brister. Very good points. Not only that about Randy Moss, Randy Moss went and played with Tom Brady for one year, having the benefit of knowing the other team's defenses because they had their playbooks. <laughs> having the benefit of playing with the New England Patriots and having the playbooks of the defenses that they played against week in and week out, Randy Moss dominated. A a, a historical year for Tom Brady, his best year by far, and a great year for Randy Moss as well, trying to pull up his numbers to see what he did that year. (laughs) 
Randy Moss.